This is a game we've just found called Ecosystem. Uh, looks fairly interesting, so we're going to give it a go. Let's get into a new game. Um, got beach, cliffs, valley, abyssal. Okay, so if you click on these, it'll show you the Okay, so it's kind of flat. It's quite interesting. Looks like it's randomly generated. Let's um, go to Valley. What does it build? Okay, so just looking at the map on the top right we'll get back to beach and go back to valley I'm not too sure. And my settings. Now that looks good. I like the graphics in this. Okay, let's let's try this one. Um Okay, tutorial. Ecosystem is a game about life. At its heart are evolving virtual organisms who grow from synthetic DNA and live in a physically simulated station. The fittest pass on their genes to their offspring. So over time, the world you create will be filled with unique creatures adapted to it. Okay, let's do that. You can move the camera horizontally with WASD with the arrow keys and you can move it vertically with Q and E. Okay, so Q takes it, that's pretty good. The so Q takes it down, E takes it up. That moves forward. You can get pretty close. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Okay. You can also change the camera angle by clicking and dragging with the right mouse button. Pretty nice. Okay. Not too sure what this is. It looks like it's um Soil. It's definitely not a vegetation type thing. Okay. You warp to location by clicking on the minimap. Oh, good. Okay. And it's pretty much um, draws it straight away. Okay. I'll go back. So here, we started you with a barren landscape, but soon it will become a thriving habitat. First step is to seed the plants and sessile organisms that will form the base of your food chain. Open the food source menu, F2. Okay, choose three food sources. Um, this was found in lakes and rivers, native to Thailand, Malaysia, China. Okay. Congo firm 
Curly leaf pondweed. Okay, just reading the different um, types here. King that one. Okay, choose two food sources. Um, no one, no one. Still, okay. Let's have a look. In order for the plant to assess all organisms to grow in a location, the ecosystem health there needs to meet its minimum requirement. Some pioneer species have no requirement and can grow anywhere. Select one of these and click once on the environment to feed it. Um, that these. Some honey species have no requirements. That one's got a requirement of 15. That one seems okay. Let's um click on some environment status, so let's just put some down there. Okay, health of three. Okay, so that's beginning to to spread. And the plant or thistle organism grows somewhere, it improves the ecosystem health nearby. By an amount depending on its neighbouring environment, plants and animals. In this way, plants and thistle organisms shift their environment in predictable ways that other plants and thistle organisms can take advantage of. Okay. The diversity of species in the area results in a greater ecosystem. Greater ecosystem health. Plants may contribute much more if the right plants are around them, but they may contribute less or nothing near others. Each plant and sessile organism has a life of its own and generates, sorry, and completes with others for space and resources, potentially driving them to extinction community, even of plants, is a complicated and sometimes chaotic system. Try planting another species. Okay, that we can do. That's mill four. Let's try mill four. Adaptability zero, eco health seven. Okay, that looks like a better option. Let's um put some in there. And some in there. And a little bit over there. Okay. Health limiting. As you increase the health of your ecosystem, you gain life points that you can spend to spawn new animal species and unlock more species of plants by the research button directly beneath the flashing life points display. That's that. Okay. I'm going to exit out of that. Now, oh, we need to get into it. 
Yourself. Oh, okay, we've done that one. Okay, the map is um, showing the spread. Time to evolve some animal life. Looks like plants, animals need a minimum ecosystem health in order to spawn and improve the ecosystem health where they live. Each species makes a separate contribution, so the greater the species diversity. In an area, the higher its health will be. Raise your ecosystem health somewhere to 15 and then open the creature menu. F3. Quite a growth there. Look, it's um, growing quite well. Just not sure. Where do you see the, the rate of growth? Go down a bit. I'm sure that's um, healthy enough. Seems to be growing. Okay, so let's let's try it anyway. Forager button should always be should already be selected. See that one there. Might be selected. Click once to spawn it in a batch of 30 creatures. Okay, so do one there. Okay. So let's see what we get from that. New creatures have completely random body shapes and nervous systems that cause them to flail around wildly. Creatures are managed to move a little, get to have more children, and over time evolution will make their descendants into talented swimmers. Let's have a look at this, some of these. Interesting. Okay, looks like that one died. get a, a few of them. One of these, save creature, edit, apex carnivore, normal carnivore. No, that one's gone. Let's um, progress further. 
first few generations feed on nutrients and water, but eventually they will become large and switch to eating food you've placed or small creatures. You can cycle through creatures by clicking on the species name that appears in the legend below the mini-map. Okay. We got... Who's that? Seems... Okay, so, um... Looks like it's on its way to having kids. Interesting. <laughs> So we've got one, two, three, four, we've got five, five different types of uh, fish. Okay. Looks like it died. Let's try interacting with an existing creature. Open the interact menu F4. You can cull a creature and you don't like by pressing the cull button. And then click on the creature you want to remove. You can boost a creature you do like, feeding it and providing it with many offspring. By pressing the boost button, click on the creature you want. Try culling or boosting a creature. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the this one here. Let's drag boost. I'm assuming I didn't kill it. what happens okay got some interesting shapes let's try first again Okay, so that's gone up to 44. You can move a creature somewhere else by pressing the drag button, then click on a creature and drag it to new location. Hold shift to drag a creature vertically instead of horizontally. Each interaction costs life points. Try dragging creature now. Oops. Um. Let's drag. Okay. I'll go and move it down there. Okay. That's simple. Getting quite a few of them now. We're we getting mostly pilgrim. It's also possible to mould the landscape, digging out caves and ravines or raising mountains. Open the terrain menu F1. Okay, let's raise, place, smooth, dig, draw, current. Let's find the thing it wants us to do. Raised terrain is already selected as it is a stone terrain type. You can also replace soil the landscape will dig four into it by clicking and dragging in the terrain. Try changing terrain now. Okay. 
Interesting shape. <laughs> Wanna have some sort of a cave thing? That's dirt. Okay. And what else? Nice. Oh, okay. They can do a bit of, um, do that yet. Affects life in several ways. Soil type affects where plants grow and the coloration of camouflage creatures. Raising or lowering altitude exposes plants to different amounts of sunlight, and creating dark spaces may provide a place for predators to lurk. Outcroppings and inclines may affect the flow of water. Might do. Put some pond weed up here. No, it's not in the instructions, but um, there we go. I have some. Pond weed there. Okay. Current transport seeds, eggs, and plankton around the environment. Forests will follow where the water flow takes them. You can create the current by selecting draw current, clicking and dragging on the turn. Okay. Let's um, zoom out. And go up. By the current there. No. Green. Where's raw current? Sure. 
going to drag it going that way. Not sure if that's working or not. I think it's worked, for sure. Not to. Okay, creature creator. You design a creature yourself in that loose environment. Open the creature menu and press the editor button. Okay. Um, lost a couple of species. Amago is. Uh, the creature menu F3, press the editor button. Oh, okay. Okay, so what have we got? Welcome to the creature creator, click on a body part, select it, size mode, drag in the axis for resize part, in move mode, drag in the point or move the part, rotate mode, there will rotate the part, move mode is unavailable when the torso is selected, try resizing, moving or rotating a body part. Okay. Where's the... Okay, that's the head of the animal there. I'm going to try and get some fins. Um, Into a random okay, that one looks like what we had before. Um, so it's flatten it out a bit. A way of adding adding a part. No, not what I want. No <clears throat> problem with the microphone, strange. Um, will take a bit of getting used to. Let's make it a smaller. Um, there's fins here. An update in progress. Okay, so it pauses everything, it seems. Okay. 
change pattern can update Add a new limb to the current selected part of the plus button, delete the selected part with the minus. Why adding? Okay, here we go. Let's um, make it a pretty thin, short. Make sure it's lined up. Yep. Can I move that? Move apart. Be way of moving it. Undo. Make it like a shock. Let's, let's do that. Name a species. Okay, so I've got ten ten characters I can use. Shock. Can I do spaces? No. Okay. That's a pretty interesting looking. <laughs> Click anywhere to spawn. Where would you like to go? In there. Okay. So we've got a sun shark. Here, somewhere. That should be happy growing. Central twenty. Mickey growing species sun shark mating poly age 0.87 survival survival's going up uh oh oh dear <laughs> sun sharks how are we going And shark's going to 27. Night forager, children 0 0.28, survival 
That is one ugly looking fish. <laughs> okay. And also a mirror limb to duplicate it from the opposite side. The makes bend and then copies the select limb and then paste it elsewhere. That's fine. I know how to do that. It's happening over there. Moving a part or pasting independent copy will link the clone part to original so that neural structure, motion and even future mutations will be shared between the two. It's the most common use case. Pasting an independent copy will duplicate the shape. The clone will have different neurons, movement and mutations. You can break links with the unlink button so they can be modified independently. This is one down there. And also just the creature's skin, head, food source and mating strategy. It's um... Let's see, food source. angles would you change food source um. what's the skin? I'll have to just changing it from forager to predator apex. So um, change it to mono. Not too sure where you change what it eats. That's ugly. <laughs> Click anywhere in the environment to spawn a batch of 30 of the creatures you just created. You can spawn more lately by selecting them via the load DNA button. Is that one there for? Selecting by the low DNA button. Okay, no idea where that is. Um, interesting. Um, that's great. How's this thing going? That is one ugly looking fish. Imagine having that with your chips. <laughs> it 
Nothing there. So the these ones are still the oh look there. But it's showing what the um fish is looking at. Fish cam. That's grazing. That's pretty cool. Let's have a look at what's going on with this one. You're not doing so well. Trying to remember all the buttons. Terrain, that's um, okay. Let's change that. He's not doing so well. Give me a bit around. Let's um make us a carnivorous one. Of her. Here we go. Yep, happy with that one. Call it a car time. There you go. Let's have a where these guys will be. Probably a bit of a mistake putting predators in here at this early stage. Down. <laughs> Trying to get used to these com uh, commands. So that goes down, that goes forward. He's not looking good. <laughs> Seven. I don't remember doing one of you. When did I make you? Who are you? It's um, Ming. Oh, 
That's ugly. <laughs> Save any creature that does by clicking on it, then pressing the save icon. And spawn save and create it creatures via the load DNA button, even from previous games. Okay, go. Yeah. Save DNA. Save that. I can follow these guys. Fireball. That's these fish are really ugly. <laughs> said before, imagine having that with your chip, see if tonight. It's your creature spend half their life searching for food and the other half looking for mates. Different species adopt different mating strategies, pairing up into mutually compatible couples, promiscuously seek out the most attractive partner that can be found or gathering a moss at a central mating ground. The system can support multiple traffic levels beyond just plant life and herbivores. Predators eat other creatures to survive and spawn a batch of predators by opening the creature menu, selecting predator and then left clicking somewhere in the environment. You can also spawn apex predators who feed on predators. So he needs no sculpture and unique ecosystem you on your own. Cool. Okay. Getting a bunch of these now. So what I'll do get a um can find a place to put it. It's really a matter of working out where to actually put it so that it'll survive. seem to be very healthy there. How about down here?
That's the first one I made. I'm trying to find where the predators are. My one down here. get used to the different types of um, plants and whatever I can put down. There are some dirty fish, uh, not dirty fish, starfish I can put down. It's, um, red so I'd say that's not a good place to put it. What's this one? Corals. And so with the game you have to try and work out what each thing needs. Obviously corals are going to work here, it's showing red. Hmm. Anyways, I might just finish it here. We coming up on uh, 53 minutes. This is just a quick look to see what the tutorial is about. This area is not very healthy at all. I might put in a bunch of stuff here. used up all my points so that health is going up how to add starfish and stuff like that that move holes was going up. Looking pretty uh, different from when we started. It's still only sitting at 10. I 
the I'll do some playing around to work out how to build a little better. These, these fish are a little weird looking. <laughs> yeah, looks like a pretty interesting game. We're doing a fair bit of work here. That seems to be coming along nicely. Okay, anyway, I'm going to finish it here. I'll do a bit of play around with it um, a bit later today and um, come back to it and uh, try a little, a little more difficult. This is the kind of uh, flat landscape. There's a whole bunch of different um, areas that we can try, so I'll try that next time. See, health of 10. When there's no plants around, that's not too bad. Okay. Up the block. That's really weird. <laughs> okay, anyway, please leave a like if you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And um, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye bye.